Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to create some blinking or flashing lights. We'll use self-illuminated objects rather than actual scene lights. Some examples of lights blinking are Christmas lights, vehicle hazard lights or turning indicators, airplane wings, instrument panels, carnival lights, whatever you can think of that blinks. What's interesting about using OSL maps is that we can use a single material to drive the behavior of all of these balls here, all of these lights and all these colors. A series of OSL maps, but a single material controlling it. So let's dive into something simple and make one single light blink. Let's bring up the material editor. We'll see that we have one material with a just a little transparency and nothing else. Here's the OSL maps. The one we're interested in is towards the bottom and it's called Waveform Animated. And let's just plug this into the color for now to see what it's doing. It's already doing something, not quite what we're looking for. Now let's see what this thing does. This allows you to use a number of different waveforms animated over time to control your material. By default, it's set to sign signed, which means signed wave signed. And all that really means is the wave is going to go and this map is going to produce a number from minus one to one, minus one to one over time. But the thing we have to remember in OSL maps is that color is always defined by zero to one. Now, a lot of us are used to colors being defined by zero to 254 or one to 255, but in the case of OSL, it's zero to one. And this is important because there's no such thing as negative zero color, which is why we're seeing this strange effect here where our light kind of freaks out. No biggie though, because what we can do is change our waveform to be unsigned. In that case, the values that it produces will be zero to one. So zero is black, one is white, 0.5 is middle gray. So let's go down here and change this to unsigned. Now, when we scrub the timeline, we'll see that the material goes all the way to red, all the way to black, all the way to red and black, and it's not blinking or going nuts. Now let's change this red to white. For our purposes, white will be all the way on or bright, and black will be all the way off. Now if you noticed, our light is starting out sort of gray. It's not all the way on and it's not all the way off. Why is that? You can see it here in the map too. That is because of the phase of the waveform. Right now it's set to zero and our period set to 60 frames, which means it'll take 60 frames to complete one cycle. Let's change this to 30 frames and our light should blink twice as fast. Very nice. But we still have the light kind of gray at the beginning. That's because our period, like we said, starts at zero if we look at the frames down here. Frame zero is the beginning of our phase. Right now that's 0.5 and that's gray. What we need to do is just shift this waveform over a quarter of the way. We need to shift it. If we want it to start black, we need to shift this waveform forward about seven and a half frames, right? If we shifted it from left to right, zero would be right about here. Let's try it. Let's say we move it seven and a half frames and now our light is black, becomes white, black, white, black, white. Now maybe you don't care, but anyways, if you do care, that's how you control where your light starts and stops. So to actually make this light glow, all we need to do, instead of plugging this into the color, let's plug it into the emission map. Okay, nothing's happening because the light is currently off, right? It's black. Let's scrub here. Now we're seeing our self-illumination color that we chose, or that I chose. And to see this really working, let's just turn on active shade and we'll see our light here. Turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. Now what if we want our light just to uh, blink on and off without being kind of a strobe? Well, what's cool about this map is that it's blinking lights is built right into it. And we don't need our 
phase anymore, I don't think. This light will just blink on and off every second. And again, if you want it to blink faster, just change the period to something smaller. So every 15 frames, it'll either blink on, stay on for 15 frames, or blink off. Cool. There you have it. Okay, let's do something a little more interesting. Let's try to make this here. So we start with a, a bunch of copies of spheres. And they've been copied in a row. So their handles, their node handles, their internal name is going to be chronological. That's important for this to work. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is grab a one of five color. And you may have seen this before. I've made another tutorial about it. It allows you to create five different colors and have them applied to whatever this material is applied to, but it's controlled by the index here. For example, if we just plug this into the color and then plug a node handle in to the index, make the range of all five colors, we'll see, we'll see these colors are applied in order. I'm not sure why it starts on input two, but in any case, it's still in order. Green, blue, magenta, orange, yellow, over and over and over again. So we're going to grab the same waveform animated map. We're going to do something a little tricky with it. Let's make it go to white. Give it a sign unsigned waveform. In this case, we're going to make the period 20. And we're going to plug this color into input 0. OK, we can see it working. Now we're going to make a few copies of this. And each one's going to move the phase five frames. I'll probably just speed this video up a little bit here. So each one of these spheres is getting the same waveform. The phase is being shifted five frames at a time, which means the top waveform has the phase of zero. The second one down has five. The one below that has 10. The one below that is 15, and the one below that is 20. So each one's starting the wave at a different time. It's just like the wave at a baseball game or a football game. Everyone starts after the other person, and it just repeats on down the line. Let's take a little look at Quickshade, and we'll see our lights are doing just what we want. Now the last example I want to look at is creating this ball of crazy lights here. But what's fun about this is that it's it's fun to look at, but it's pretty simple to do. Let's take a look. Here it is already set up. And sometimes OSL maps are very fast in the viewport, and sometimes they're not. Um, I noticed that if you activate quick shade, strangely, it'll actually make the viewport play faster. You'd think it would slow it down. But here's the final product, and I'm just gonna show you the map and how it's laid out instead of building it one map at a time. So again, we start with this basic material. This one has no transparency, it has a little bit of luminance. And the color of these balls is being driven by this one of five color into the base color and the color of the emission. And what we have is a random index by number map here. What that's going to do is take our node handle, which if you remember is a uh, specific number that each object has in the scene. And it's going to create a random number and randomly apply one of five colors to our spheres. To get each sphere to have the waveform applied to it in a different time, all we're doing is plugging a random number into the phase. So again, we're using the node handle. So each sphere is going to get a randomly different phase. And that phase is going to be somewhere between minus 30 and 30. And I chose that because our period is 30. Now, I think you could get away with just doing 0 to 30. But this felt like it gave me more variety of phase for these guys. So all we're doing is giving each sphere the same waveform, but again, phase is being shifted. In this case, it's driven by a random number. And that's all there is to it. And when you render it out, you'll see that each sphere more or less has a slightly different phase. I hope you learned something about OSL and the waveform animated map. And I encourage you to explore these other waveforms and 
amplitude, the midpoint's interesting to make the light kind of delay when it comes on or, or when it turns off. Amplitude, it doesn't have to get all the way bright. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.